the more things change, the more they stay the same. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, not to be confused with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, is a reboot of Call of Duty's Modern Warfare franchise's story. It shares little resemblance with its previous iteration, namely just the presence of Captain Price, but it updates alongside reimagining. New weapons, new mechanics, new world, new story. The gunplay feels the same, smooth and standard, but doesn't get old, of course. Sniping actually feels a little smoother, and for the moment, seems as though I'll have much more success in multiplayer now. I'm Richard Jellison for VGS, and I want to talk about the ending of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, what happened, and where the game is going from here. So, at the end of the game, Captain Price and his team have neutralized the Russian commander Barkov, which grants him the ability to put together a special operations team. Who's on this team, you may ask? Who's your crew? Sergeant Garrick. Kyle? They call him Gaz. He never said anything. John Octavish, SAS, sniper, demolitions, goes by soap. Why? It's classified. <laughs> there he is. Simon Riley. There's no picture. Never. If you didn't catch that, it was revealed that Kyle Garrick, the second main character you were playing as this whole time, is Gaz, one of the original members of Team 141. If that's not significant, 141 is the call sign of Price's task force. Besides that, you can see him wanting to recruit fan favorites Ghost and Soap as well, and that just about rounds up the squad for sequel bait. So then, the credits roll. But no, we aren't done yet. Who's that guy in the hat? Who's at the helm? Someone new. Nice hit. What's his name? That's Khalid Al-Assad taking care of business with his Desert Eagle. And seeing him means a lot of trouble for 141. He was one of the primary antagonists in the original Modern Warfare story, who ultimately wiped out 30,000 soldiers in one go with a nuclear warhead. Based on the uncomfortable and gruesome imagery shown in this reboot, we can only just imagine the carnage to come from this guy. But really, he was just second fiddle to, you, to this guy. Sakaya von Sparkov's throne. I almost buried him in Pripyat. With Macmillan. That was the father. This is the son, Victor. Lovely family. And the two of them lead the Russian ultra nationalists, which, that's a bad thing. Victor, in his iconic blue tracksuit, is trying to bring back Soviet victory and glory to sweet mother Russia. <laughs> After telling Soap that they will all die soon anyway, he shoots himself in the head. Shit, he's got some issues. And then his father goes soon after. But their legacy carries on into Modern Warfare 3. So with just a name drop alone, the next few sequels promise to up the stakes significantly over the original trilogy. But if we're talking about modern warfare, you know, this whole franchise, we have to mention the most impactful part of the entire series. General Shepard pulled the files you asked for. What exactly is this about? The name General Shepard should stick out in your mind. Why? No! General Shepard betrays you and the rest of Task Force 141 in Modern Warfare 2, and while the twist is easy to see now, I didn't expect it a decade ago. Shepard is your handler, your team leader. He briefs you at the beginning of every single mission and gives you all of your orders. He's directly responsible for Roach, who you play as through the majority of Modern Warfare 2, and Ghost, a huge fan favorite character, and their deaths. But mostly, he's also the cause of No Russia. Remember, no Russia. 
No Russian is probably the best known mission of Call of Duty history next to maybe all gillied up. And because of this airport shooting in that level, he pretty much directly caused World War III. No Russian is considered the most controversial mission of Call of Duty. Well, at least it was for a long time. But with Shepard's inclusion here, and the tone of this series so far, I can only imagine the grisly horror the new trilogy will throw at us. We've already seen the aforementioned mass shooting, nuclear weapons being detonated, and the start and end of a world war. Characters have lived and died by our actions and objectives. We've been shot in the head, burned alive, exploded. We've threatened a mother and her child to get a monster of a man to talk. We've seen executions and torture and interrogation firsthand. Gas attacks and IEDs killed our mothers, our friends, and our families. Children have fought, killed, and lived in cages for years. Modern Warfare as a series has brought some, let's say, uncomfortable realities to light on many occasions. And with a return to form, following their space adventures starring Kit Harrington, their mech suit assisted soldiers in advanced warfare, and their battle royale focused Black Ops 4, it's almost refreshing to have a normal boots on the ground shooter with no real gimmicks. Well, maybe a few since they've brought back the much loved special ops mode. Now we can only hope to have every level turned in fan favorite all gillied up, but that's just what I want to see. They give us a ton of information here in just a few little cutscenes, and the sequels really have a lot of work cut out for them. Will they stack up to the first three? With as much content as there seems to be planned, maybe there'll be four games instead of a trilogy. Well, what do you think? Let us know. I'm Richard for VGS.